Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's video, we're gonna go on a little trip. We're gonna take a trip down to the pharmacy. I'm gonna show you the array of different anti-inflammatory medications. We're gonna talk a little bit about side effects, stuff that you should be doing different. And yes, it's still snowing. This is how much snow is on the car. So you guys can see behind me, we're heading into Shoppers. I've found the pain relief aisle, so that's where we're heading off to. Here, we at, here we're at the anti-inflammatory aisle now. The single biggest selling or top selling anti-inflammatory is ibuprofen and the brand is Advil. So I mean it comes in an array of different sizes and shapes. Here's Advil, 12 hours. Uh, it just so happens that the company that makes Advil is Pfizer. They all, they're one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies worldwide. They also make a host of medications to supply physicians, hospitals to treat side effects from the common anti-inflammatory medications. So I just got kicked out of the shopper's drug mart. I was approached by a manager saying that I had to talk to some management before I could even film in the store. So be it, I don't actually know the specifics on store policies or not, and I wasn't about to give that particular company bad press. Uh, the person was friendly enough. Regardless, the message is that, I mean, you have hundreds of thousands of pharmacies across North America, millions worldwide. The most, one of the most common medications that is sold from those pharmacies are, you know, those anti-inflammatories, like the ones I'm showing you there in the video. The, ibuprofen, for instance, the Brad Advil, or aspirin, you know, produced by Bayer. I just finished reading one review study which estimated that somewhere upwards of 7% of the U.S. hospital admissions are directly related to NSAID, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug um, intake. I mean, 7%. You can go, I did a little bit more researching, so there's over 35 million admissions, um, hospital admissions to the U.S. per year. 7% of that gives you about 2.5 million. So 2.5 million people, or at least hospital visits, are directly related to this. You know, those common anti-inflammatories. There are no stats, or very few stats on these guys. When I was doing some more research on uh, veterinary adverse drug events, or ADEs, I mean, the last reported stats I could find were 2013. So they're just, we don't have near the documentation, we don't have sort of the near reporting system. So you, but you can easily draw the same parallels to our pets. All right, little Tula. Your video time is almost ending. So if you are to go into a hospital because you've had some adverse event as a result of taking a common anti-inflammatory drug, be it a stomach ulcer, be it a blood clot, some other cardiac related event, perhaps you have some degree of kidney damage, it's quite possible then that the same company that is producing that drug, you know, be it Pfizer, be it Bayer, is going to be the very same company that's going to produce the medication to help you with those side effects. Fairly convenient. And unfortunately, those same things are applied in veterinary medicine. I mean, the same guys that are producing medication that we're giving to our dogs, for instance, or giving to our cats, are then producing the same drugs to treat the side effects. I mean, if you're cynical, you might kind of wonder, I mean, are, are they really on the up and up? So is it all doom and gloom? Well, no. I mean. Does conventional medication have an array of benefits? You bet. Um, has it helped us? Has it helped me? Helped me in veteran practice? You bet it has. But you need to put it in context. You need to be thoughtful and smart about it. 
and really think. Now, first of all, does your dog need that anti-inflammatory pill for his lameness, or do you need it? Um, is there another option? In the majority of times, there are other options, at the very least considering those natural alternatives, to potentially even lower the dose. But so what do you guys take from all this? First of all, medication has side effects, whether it's conventional, whether it's not. And unfortunately, there seems to be a fairly high incidence of side effects with many of the common conventional medications, such as anti-inflammatory drugs. But just use a whole bunch of common sense, seek out some of the natural alternatives, discuss this with your physician by all means, discuss this with your veterinarian. There's a number of those alternatives that have some pretty good research behind them, and they can be often used in conjunction. Lastly, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button down there and like this video, and then click the button a little bit further below, and then when you do that and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books, my free videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.